Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Diamond. Today I'm reviewing a wine from our upcoming guest on the Pink Society chat on Twitter. This is the Tongue Dancer Chardonnay. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, uh, before we get started, if you like today's video, please subscribe to the channel and maybe consider sharing this with a friend, especially if you're going to be part of the Pink Society chat on Twitter this Thursday then definitely share this out so that way people know who is going to be our guest. All right, so today I have the 2018 Tongue Dancer Chardonnay. It is 14.3% alcohol by volume and it retails for, spoiler alert, $50. So it is outside the normal wine on the dime price range, but I can't knock them. I mean, there are a lot of places there. There are a lot of wines that are, but I still like to try them from time to time. Thank you though for sending it to me for this upcoming Pink Society chat. So let's take a look at this wine. So I always love um, details when it comes to my wine whenever I'm, I'm tasting it. I'm kind of a nerd that way. I, ha I have a degree in science, actually more focused on botany, which is funny that I review an agricultural product on this channel. And also, I, I just like numbers and stuff. Well, on that note, they were kind enough to send a tasting card that had, I'm not, I, I don't look at the tasting notes, but I like looking at like the winemaking notes. This card is the closest thing I've ever seen to a winemaker's version of a centerfold that I have ever stumbled upon. So they even include stuff like 100% whole cluster press straight to barrel, 100% barrel fermented, 100% native yeast, 100% malolactic fermentation, hey, because MLF is legendary. It also includes stuff like how long it was aged for, the harvest bricks, the harvest date, the alcohol percentage, the residual sugar, production, release date, the clone information. This has a ton of stuff on it. What I'll do is if they can't send me a soft copy of this, I'll take a picture of it and put it in the video description below because some of y'all will like it. Going into that note, even the wine label has like, some information regarding who made the wine. So, where some some places, unless you do a lot of research, you don't quite know who the winemaker is. Like you really have to go in, like dig on their website or or kind of do some research, especially if it's a bigger corporate brand. Um, in this case, they just put all this information. They just give it straight to me, which is awesome. So I really appreciate that. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this wine. From a color standpoint, you are a light gold, no artifacts, no cloudiness. All right. So on the nose. Oh man, oh man, there's just this nice pear and bright lemon note. Uh, there's a little bit of a, uh, is it green apple? Red apple, maybe both. There's a little bit, there's, there's an apple note here, but I'm having a hard time picking out a specific one. I'm kind of wondering if it has both. All right, so I'm also getting like a little bit of like a, a coconut. There's like a trop, almost like a mango, maybe a hint of peach. It's a slight toastiness to it, almost like it's a, like a toasted walnut. And there's like a, like a, a slight touch of bread. Yeah, just like a, like a toasted croissant. Like, not like where like you stick it in the toaster. I'm talking about like you get a griddle, screaming hot griddle, toast it for a few seconds, let the butter kind of cook itself and then flip it over. And that's that's the type of smell I'm getting out of this. I may have made Gordon Ramsay's eggs and salmon thing for my wife the other day and that was one of the steps in the process so that's the only reason i know that kind of specific toasty smell all right so anyway let's go ahead and get to the taste and this is so they mentioned that it's, it's spent 16 months surly that means the, the the leaves were incorporated as part of the aging process this is a creamy smooth wine yeah i mean this is I mean, it just has this nice balance of like all the, the, the flavor spectrum. I'm getting this kind of red and green fruit and then I'm getting a touch of citrus and I'm getting a touch of stone fruit and I'm getting a touch of this tropical note. All those flavors are there. The secondary is not overpowering at all. And so that's something that for, for a long time I've, I've actually been kind of turned off by California Chardonnays because they, they just have so much overpowering secondary unless you find the producers who are trying to make sure they have a really good balance of everything. All the balance of the fruit here, all of the balance with the secondary, it's just, it's a really nice touch. And then going into the finish, it has a long finish. Like, I took that sip and I've just I'm kind of been sitting here in silence waiting for it to go away. And um, it's, it's, it's much like an annoying college roommate. You're just stuck with it for a while. However, this annoying college roommate is not annoying. It is a brilliant person who helps you with your homework because none of those qualities on the palate are horrible. Quite nice. Got, got medium plus acid. Everything just plays so well together. 
it's play this is this is a, a delight of a Chardonnay to taste and I don't say that often with California Chardonnays and I'm not saying that because they sent it to me I am really I am I'm very very happy with this wine. Let's get to the book. Balance, as I've said, this is one of the most imbalanced white wines I've had in a long time. Full point. Length, it has a long finish. It has a really long finish. Like, going on 60 plus seconds. So, full point. Intensity, medium plus intensity on the nose, medium plus intensity on the palate, so half a point. Complexity, I'm getting a great number of primary, great number of secondary, getting no tertiary, so half a point. In the end, that's three points. This is a solidly very good wine. And I am, I, this is one of those where I'm, I'm not going to go downstairs and enjoy it. I am going to just kind of keep it good for the next day because tomorrow I'm making a keto version of lobster mac and cheese. And this is the exact wine that I want to pair with it. The creaminess will match the creaminess. The flavors will augment everything in my dish. And it is going to be fantastic. So, um, I, I'm, I'm actually very excited for dinner tomorrow, way more excited than I already was. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you tried the 2018 Tongue Dancer Chardonnay? I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime.